How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a video on 10 cheap convertible cars that you can buy for under £2,000. Going back to the roots of the channel at this point, I'm talking cars that are literally ultra cheap and you can take the roofs off of them. And by the way, I've got a double giveaway later on in this video, so stay tuned for that. Now, as I said, there were 10 cars in this video, but there are also six honorable mentions that I wanted to just quickly point out before you all start having a go at me in the comments. That is the Smart Roadster, which I really like, but it's hard to get under 2K. The Saab 93, which I mentioned in my last video on convertible cars. The Alpha Spider, which I absolutely love, but there aren't many under two grand. The Toyota MR2, which again, not very many under two grand. The BMW 318CI, the E46, which there's another BMW in this video, which I thought was cooler. And the Mini Cooper convertible, which I always seem to include Mini in my video. So I decided not to in this one. Anyway, don't forget I'm in the UK, so prices in other country may differ. And remember that whenever you buy any secondhand car, maintenance, repairs, insurance, all that good stuff is important to remember. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more weekly car content. Without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Let's kick this video off with a car concepted by highly respected design house Gear, then designed by the other highly respected design house Pininfarina, the Ford Street car with its 1.6 litre inline four engine, putting out 93 brake horsepower, which takes from 0 to 60 in 11.7 seconds. There was also the non convertible sport car, which dropped at the same time, which was aimed at a more masculine part of the market than the more feminine street car, evidenced by the fact that the street car was launched in collaboration with Kylie Minogue. You can get it with either the standard folding soft top or find a detachable hardtop for it from the winter edition. It comes in basic or luxury spec with luxury giving it heated leather seats and interior, as well as a few other little benefits. To confirm that it's a Pininfarina design, it also gets the house engraved into the sill plates. These are listed for under £1,000 at the lower end, but two grams will get you on with around 40 to 60,000 miles on the clock, and fortunately most are in luxury spec anyway. There are quite a few known problems on these, rust and paintwork being the two main ones to watch out for, as well as electrical issues coil packs and a knocking from the front suspension. Owners note that it also only really works as a city car as it's highly impractical and poor on long journeys. Next up it's a rogue one, the Vauxhall Tigra with its 1.8 litre inline 4 engine putting out 123 brake horsepower which takes from 0 to 60 in 9.1 seconds. This is the second generation Tigra but the first convertible which benefits from being a hard top too as a competitor to cars like the Peugeot 206 CC. The car was actually produced by the same French coach builder as the 206 CC who were also responsible for great cars like the 205 T16 and the Renault 5 Turbo. It's actually based on the Vauxhall Corsa C, despite having looks more reminiscent of the Corsa D at the front, and with the 1.8 litre engine you can get it in sport or the more recent exclusive trim, meaning slightly more angular styling with different alloys. But a lot of owners complain about the bland and somewhat uncomfortable interior, which makes sense as it's basically just taken from a 2000 Corsa. These are listed for a minimum of around £1,300 and two grams will get you on with around 80,000 miles on the clock. On reliability, Vauxhall technicians note the 1.8 litre engine in particular is quite reasonable, as long as the cam belt has been changed every 40,000 miles. Uneven running is a known issue caused by a faulty O2 sensor, and the transmission can feel a bit notchy, but all in all it's not a terrible story. In 8th we have the MGTF with its 1.8 litre inline 4 engine putting out 134 brake horsepower, which gets from 0 to 60 in 8.2 seconds. I've mentioned this car in a previous video on convertibles, and my personal favourite thing about it is that it's a convertible convertible, mid-engined, rear-wheel drive little sports car, plus it was re-engineered over its F predecessor to handle better, have more power and rival the MX-5 and Lotus Elan. That's a recipe for success if you ask me. However, it does have a Rover K-Series engine which is renowned for head gasket failure, which definitely takes away from that winning formula. Plus, it was a major sales flop for Nanjing Automobile, the Chinese state-owned enterprise that resumed the car's production after MG went into administration. The minimum you'll find these listed for is around one £1,400 and for two grand you're looking at a 2002 example with around 70,000 miles on it. They're not massively known for rust either which is a good sign but always worth checking especially as they are known for water leaks and any structural corrosion could be car ending. I do like these little cars but they wouldn't be my personal first pick. A future classic for many though I'm sure. Let's move on to the Peugeot 206 CC specifically with the 2 litre inline 4 engine putting out 138 brake horsepower which takes from 0 to 60 in 9.1 
9 seconds. Now CC stands for Coupe Cabriolet, though the original concept was actually called the 2 Heart, shown at the Geneva Motor Show in 2000. Like the Tigre, it has a convertible hardtop roof and comes from the same French coach builders. However, owners have been quite savage about these in many cases, questioning the build quality, noting a very uncomfortable driving position and a generally cramped interior, which I assume was squashed thanks to the convertible storage space in the boot, as well as a sloping roof line, so minimal headroom in the rear. The pedals are really close together and slightly offset, which some people absolutely hate. Great for heel toe though. Owners also note hefty wind and road noise too, so lots of complaints basically, though plenty of people do love these, especially if they just treat them as two-seater summer cars. These are listed for under £1,000 at the bottom end and two grand will get you a 2005 example with around 70,000 miles on it. Peugeot aren't known for their reliability and a key problem noted on these is the roof getting stuck. Water leaks are also a problem, but surprisingly the engines don't seem to be a huge issue and the electronics aren't massively reported either. Just missing out on the top five is one of my personal favourites, the BMW Z3 with the 1.9 litre inline four engine, which makes 140 brake horsepower and gets the car to 60 in 9.2 seconds. It was the first mass produced BMW Z car as its predecessor is the incredibly rare Z1, although it is actually based on the E36 3 series platform, laying the foundations for the Z4. Strangely, it was also the first BMW to be manufactured entirely outside Germany, instead being built in South Carolina, USA. The original body style was criticised for being too soft and boring, so in 1999 the car was facelifted with a more aggressive styling and wider arches. These generally go for more cash now, as the vast majority of car enthusiasts can't seem to turn down a fat set of arches. Having driven one a long time ago, I can confirm it's a fun car to drive and it's looking increasingly classic by the day. Maybe not as engaging as an MX-5, but it definitely has a different type of allure to it. £1,500 is around the minimum you'll pay for one of these, and there aren't many under two grand, so you're looking at 100,000 miles-ish for that kind of money. With age has come a few issues, but most are well documented and some can be sorted yourself with some basic mechanical knowledge. Key issues include lambda sensor failures, as well as the starter motor failure, cooling issues, powered hood failures, and classic wear on the suspension. So I hope you're enjoying the video. If you are, make sure you hit the like button. I would really appreciate it, and so would the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe as well if you're new, but I wanted to mention that giveaway that I mentioned at the start of the video. Now this is not an advert, literally my friend makes some really cool jewellery, so here you can probably just about see on my wrist, in fact if I if I zoom in here, there we go, very nice. So this is a Blacksmith London chain that I am wearing right here, and basically a good friend of mine started this brand a few years ago, and it has been absolutely doing bits. When I was buying his Icon collection, I bought myself a silver bracelet and a gold bracelet, so I thought why not buy a second silver one and a second gold one to give away to some of you guys. All you need to do to enter is be subscribed to this channel, drop a comment down below, let me know which of the 10 cars in this video you like the most, and also which of the two chains you'd like, a silver one or a gold one. And as part of that comment, throw in your Instagram handle and I will check to make sure that you're also following me on Instagram at carswithjb. Also make sure you are following Blacksmith London on Instagram as well. Assuming all of those things are done, next Friday I will do the draw, work out who gets it, and I'll just announce it live on Instagram or something. Anyway, let's get back to the video. In fifth, we have the Mazda MX-5 NB, or the second generation model, with the 1.8 litre inline four engine with 140 brake horsepower and a 0 to 60 time of 7.7 seconds. There are plenty of videos noting how the NB is basically a better car than the first gen NA in every way, except for the lack of pop-up headlights. But if you can get over that one emission, these cars are an absolute steal right now and will no doubt go up in value in the future as a well-loved roadster. It was made to be more aerodynamic, have better handling, produce power more efficiently, and generally offer a more updated package to the first generation, while many parts are still quite interchangeable between the two, like the optional hardtop roof. Having driven one of these, and as an owner of a Mark 1, they are slow, but exceptionally fun to drive either way. If you want a ropey 1.6 litre example, you can pay less than a grand, while two grand will get you a 1.8 with under 70,000 miles on the clock. Though reliability on these is generally pretty solid from an engine point of view, rust is the Achilles heel of any early MS. X5. The seals, both outer and inner, are key to check, and it's highly likely you'll at least find a little bit of corrosion, which can be expensive to fix. Though these are lovely cars, don't do what I did and assume you'll get lucky. Assume you'll get rust. Next up is the VW EOS with its 2 litre inline 4 petrol engine, putting out 147 brake horsepower and managing a 0 60 time of 9.5 seconds. It's another CC and came as a successor to the Golf Cabriolet and shares its platform and many components with the Mark. 
Mark V Golf. It's named after the Greek goddess of dawn, but was first shown as the concept C car in the 2004 Geneva Motor Show before coming into production as the EOS from 2006. It's got a pretty cool five piece hard top folding roof with a sliding glass sunroof as well, which actually folds into the boot. So best not have a full boot on a hot sunny day. Of all the coupe cabriolets that appeared in the mid 2000s from the main brands, the EOS definitely gained the highest overall status, helped by its quite spacious cabin and slightly more luxurious overall feel and better build quality. £1,500 is the minimum you'll find these listed for and two grand to get in with around 100,000 miles on it. It's reasonably reliable too, although the roof is a pain to sort if it does go wrong and can leak terribly if there are issues. It's also quite a heavy car thanks to that roof, so do be aware of potential suspension issues. On to the top three now, and in third is the Volvo C70 with its 2.4 litre inline 5 engine, putting out 167 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 8.8 seconds. This is the second generation C70, the first with a retractable hardtop and the first time Pininfarina had ever manufactured outside of Italy, as it came as a result of a joint venture between Volvo and the Italian design house. As a Volvo, it isn't hugely exciting, as instead they marketed the car on the side of safety and mechanical quality. It's a pretty heavy car, so definitely think of it as a cruiser rather than as a sporty convertible, and has reasonable fuel economy at an average of 31.4 miles per gallon. For two grand, I actually quite like the interiors on these in terms of quality of materials, with plenty of leather and a no-nonsense dashboard. It comes in a few specs too, so search for examples with cream or brown or burgundy interiors rather than just the usual black. These are few and far between for under two grand, but the minimum you'll find them listed for is around one and a half thousand pounds. Reliability is good on these, with owners mostly noting annoyances with interior trim squeaking or rattling, which isn't the end of the world. There's also known squeaks from the roof, and owners note a good lubricant can sort it out. Otherwise, electricals have been known to go, but I couldn't find much else. In second is the Mercedes SLK 230, with its 2.3 litre supercharged inline four, which puts out 197 brake horsepower and does 0 to 60 in seven seconds, making it the second quickest car on this list. This is the first generation SLK which stands for sporty, light and compact and this car definitely fits the brief. If you'd asked me five years ago if I liked this car I'd have 100% told you a flat out no but over time it definitely seems to be growing on me and I reckon some well looked after SLKs will achieve classic status in the future. It's actually based on the same platform as the W202 C class with many of the same components from the chassis and drivetrain. It also got exactly the same wheelbase as the legendary 190 SL and 300 SL. There are a bunch of luxury features for the time on the interior too, like dual zone climate control for example, and it came with all the basics you'd expect from Mercedes at the time. These are super cheap for Mercs that I reckon will go up in value in the future at £1,300 bare minimum and around 100,000 miles for an example at the £2,000 mark. Rust is a known issue as well as engine oil contamination, electrical issues and the hardtop convertible roof can seize if not used for a while, so worth checking all of these before you buy. Taking the top spot is the first generation Audi TT Roadster with the 225 BAM engine, which is a 1.8 litre turbocharged inline 4, putting out 221 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds, just beating the SLK. I've spoken about these a fair bit in previous videos, so instead let me tell you a mad story. Originally they didn't have rear spoilers, but were recalled due to fears of the cars losing stability at high speeds and a few fatalities. So that little spoiler on the back might be the difference between cruising comfortably and disaster. In roads to spec, these lose the rear seats but maintain most of the other fundamentals of the coupe, like the Haldex all-wheel drive layout. I actually prefer the car as a coupe, but as with many convertibles, this does look good with the top down. The interior is basic but exactly enough at the time and is hard wearing enough considering these have been around for over 20 years at this point. These are slowly increasing in value and though there are plenty of examples with 150 brake horsepower available for under 2 grand, 225 BAMs are difficult to come by. £1,700 is around the minimum you'll spend. Oil leaks, electrical issues, perished hoses, alternator failures and some suspension issues are known amongst a few other issues but generally this generation of TT is relatively cheap to run and maintain and they're starting to appreciate in value too. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did make sure you hit the like button I'd really appreciate it. Don't forget as well the Blacksmith London giveaway, I know not all of you all love chains but I really do and I thought I'd give some away to you guys. Again hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe as well if you're new. Massive thank you to the patrons as always for their support and to you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Listen.